know and love it, and we can't get enough of it. This is the 23 center console. It's also the test bed for the upcoming 23 hardtop. It has a super aggressive 26 degree dead rise at the transom. However, Roger since reduced the dead rise to 23 degrees to make it more of an all-rounder. Luckily for the bloody bastards at Seakeeper who own this boat, they have one of the early limited edition super deep V models. Today, we're lucky enough to have skipper of the ship, Tom from Seakeeper, along from the ride. We're gonna ask Tom all the questions you've always wanted to know about gyros. We've also brought along the captain's first mate, Avan, to help us get onto the fish, as well as get his first impressions on the beach and Seakeeper combo. The first time I drove one of these boats, it was a twin rig yammy setup. I couldn't stop smiling for a week. This boat, although it's only a single, is still no different. The 23 cuts open the ocean like a surgeon's blade and leaves you waiting for a thud that never ends up coming. Another big plus is the secondary helm station up top. Having the ability to look into the ocean with an almost bird's eye view gives you a huge advantage when switch baiting billfish or cruising around coral bombies in search of GTs. Now this particular build, the guys opted to not have that second station, which I was devastated about, but they wanted to do this to keep weight down. Now, the dry weight of the rig is about three to 3.2 ton. Add in the Seakeeper one at 165 kilos, 150 liters of fuel, and you're at your 3.5 ton towing limit. And the guys at Seakeeper run dual cab utes, so that's a big priority to them. Another handy feature about Veach boats is that they come with Seakeeper compatibility out of the box. So there's no need to get the circular saw out if you plan on installing one. Stability is always gonna be the kryptonite of the deep V, especially when you're rocking 26 degrees of it. This is why the Seakeeper crew thought it would be ideal model boat to apply their gyro smarts to. As previously mentioned, there's an SK-1 sitting neatly in the belly of this 23 of each console. It's also got a neat little perspex hatch so you can watch the magic happen. The SK-1 in the Veach 23 particularly comes into its own when we were at rest catching bait at the heads. Sydney's North Head is a shit show at the best of times with a confused sea coming from all directions. It's also interesting to feel the gyro work whilst underway. There's definitely a noticeable improvement in the boat's sensitivity while not affecting the ride in the turns. Now the Sea Keeper takes about 20 minutes to fully spool up so once that was ready and cooking, we headed out, loaded up on some squid, some pike, slimies, yakkers. Ivan is a beast catching bait. We then went and tried a few of the sort of local reefs off Long Reef and DY, and it was insane. We having the sea keeper turned off and then on was night and day. You'll, uh, you'll have to check out the little whiskey test we did later. Uh, we caught some snapper, caught some kings, had an awesome day, but enough from me. Let's hear from Tom about how these things work. Tom Kallick, work for Twin Disc Pacific, and I sell sea keepers. Tell me uh, broadly, what are gyros? So a gyro, a, the actual gyro is centuries old, but um, what sea keeper have done, have uh, brought them into the 21st century uh, by incorporating them to, into boat design to stop the roll or stabilize boats. Five years ago, I didn't even hear the word gyro. What's taken them so long to get to market? Seakeeper have been making uh, gyro stabilizers since 2008, and their first models suited boats in that 50 to 60 foot range. Unlike some uh, technologies out there, they got smaller and smaller. So as they progressed, they decided to increase their market share by going to smaller boats. With the, uh, the Seakeeper specifically, can you explain how it works? The Seakeeper being a gyro, it generates gyroscopic torque. Now we transfer that torque into the hull to counteract side to side action or wave action to stabilize the boat. Um, what manufacturers are, are running with sea keepers these days? Almost 400 boat builders worldwide use sea keepers. At the, at the current time, our customer base tends to be premium trailer boats. So hardcore offshore fishermen that spend a lot of hours offshore that maybe take the boat out for multiple days on their trip, they cannot predict the weather. So when they're out there, if it's crap, they're still going, no matter what. What that does is it'll make their time out there more comfortable. 
Alternatively, it'll allow you to go on days that you normally wouldn't fish. So if you suffer from seasickness, the Sea Keeper is a perfect solution for that. The other thing that I've felt personally, because I don't get seasick, but what I do get is fatigue. So if you're out there, say, game fishing all day, as a lot of guys will uh, attest to this, you're out there all day, your body's working, fighting the wave action. You get off the boat with a sea keeper, you're still fresh. Um, can you tell me about like sort of water cooled versus air cooled and sort of what the advantages are with the sea keeper or the other brands? So the sea keeper is water cooled. Just like your engine's water cooled and on the larger vessels, your air condition is water cooled, your generator is water cooled, or the gyro is water cooled as well. The advantages that that gives us is a boat like this is a perfect example where we can put the sea keeper in a tight enclosed area and not have to worry about uh, ventilation or additional fans. We can lock them up in a box if need be and they'll still, they won't generate any additional heat. Bit of a, uh, bit of a random question, but can they actually go in a cat? Yeah, absolutely. So it, we haven't fitted one in a cat locally. However, some uh, premium cat builders in the States such as Worldcat, uh, Freeman Boatworks, uh, Costa Custom Boats, all catamarans have all fitted sea keepers successfully. Can you uh, run me through some, um, some specs on this one? So sort of weight, dimensions. Yep. So the Sea Keeper 1 uh, fits in an envelope of roughly 600mm by 600mm by about 400mm high. So very low profiles. Great for fitting below the floor or under a seat. Um, they only weigh about 165 kilo. Now the Sea Keeper 1, in this instance, the 1 stands for 1,000 Newton metres per second of torque. So there's a lot of torque about torque. Now, the way Seakeeper measures torque is time, torque over time, so newton metres per second. So the more torque you can produce over time, the better you can stabilise throughout the whole wave action. All right, toilets talk turkey. What's it going to set us back to get an SK-1? Everything inclusive, about 28,000 plus installation. We've got the Seakeeper installed, the love and life on the water. What is it going to cost us though in ongoing service? What are the requirements? With the smaller sea keepers that are DC powered, there's minimal maintenance required. Uh, yearly inspections, um, visual inspections, as well as uh, bleeding the cooling system or flushing the cooling system and um, bleeding the hydraulic ram. Do you have to take that to a specialised sea keeper dealer or? Yeah, so you need to either take it to Twindisc or um, one of the sea keeper dealers that we've got all over Australia. Tell us, uh, tell us about today. What did we, what did we get up to? Yeah, today was great. So we went out with Ivan, a uh, great fisherman there. He put us onto the fish here and it was the first fish this boat's ever caught. So it's a brand new boat. We've only just recently launched it. It's done a couple of boat shows, but no actual recreational use or fishing use. And today was a good opportunity to get out there uh, in some real world conditions, test the sea keeper in real world conditions and catch some fish. <laughs> okay, so we're out here today on the Veach 23, testing out the sea keeper one. And uh, we've run it through its paces today but the captain boys have assured me they've got some state-of-the-art technology to uh, really, really determine and test the stability of, uh, of a Sea Keeper 1 in action. So we've got a beautiful whiskey here. This is definitely Nick's choice, not Jack, because he's got terrible taste. He'll drink piss. <laughs> Look at this, this is just ridiculous. There's no way I can drink in these conditions. Come on Jack, turn on the sea keeper. Perfect. Um, tell us a little bit about the, the Veach 23. What did, you, what did you think of the boat? Amazing boat. Super soft riding, uh, and the Sea Keeper complements this type of boat. Uh, awesome. So, you know, a deep V hull, narrow, such as a lot of the deep V fiberglass boats that we have in Australia. They, they meet the towing requirements being under 2.5 metres wide, but in turn, I guess that makes them susceptible to rolling. So, you've got the high performance hull, but with the Sea Keeper, you get the stability as well. On, on the uh, on Sea Keeper app on the MFD, we saw um, roll angles of about 13, up to 13 degrees. And as you saw, when we put the Sea Keeper on, it brought it down to zero and one degrees. So it's a phenomenal achievement. Tell me about the um, functionality between the Sea Keeper and the screens. So the Sea Keeper networks to 
uh, most of the common MFDs. In this instance, we've used Simrad. Uh, they integrate with Simrad great. They also integrate with Garmin, uh, Raymarine, and Furuno. So, what would I change? To be honest, not much. My main gripe would be the visibility for the console. The small windscreen and thick black frame make it feel like you're peering through a World War II pillbox. Not ideal when you're navigating around the reef at over 40 knots. Also, the live wells are a little small for a boat of this fishing caliber. We'd also love a few tow holes in the cockpit. Roger, are you taking notes? For me, having the Sea Keeper in a boat like this is a no-brainer. If you can stomach the almost 30k price tag, you'll be rewarded with comfortable offshore fishing and no more days cut short by your mates getting seasick. The Veach 23 is surprisingly versatile for a big center console and will suit a huge range of different fishos. I could see myself cruising Sydney Harbour with mates and a donut in tow one day, then out chasing blue marlin wide the next.